I can't help agreeing with the notion that, when human willpower and dedicated effort come together, remarkable miracles can truly occur in our world. Hello everyone! Today, once again, I'd like to share a few thoughts about China. China, which has an ancient past and a tremendously large population, is widely known for its love of grand-scale projects, ranging from the famous Great Wall of China all the way to the immense Three Gorges Dam, the biggest hydroelectric power plant on the planet that I introduced recently. And now, China has announced yet another sweeping plan, turning parts of the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, which are unsuitable for farming, into lush oases filled with thriving greenery. Everyone, welcome to our channel! Does that sound exciting to you? Alright, let's jump in and get started! Where there's no water, life cannot exist. Now, let's take a detailed look at the challenges China encountered as it worked toward making this project a reality. As a side note for those who may not know, around one-third of China's landmass is too harsh for human habitation, spanning roughly 1,160,000 square miles, which is truly enormous. On top of that, a huge part of this barren territory is consumed by forbidding deserts, making any form of farming and even simple day-to-day -day survival completely out of reach. Located here is the so-called Desert of Death, the Taklamakan Desert, ringed by towering mountain ranges where scorching sands are endlessly driven by fierce winds, forming an unbroken ocean of dunes. Only a handful of rare creatures, such as the long-eared jerboa and the wild Bactrian camel, manage to eke out an existence in this hostile environment. Among all the sandy deserts on Earth, the Taklamakan Desert holds the distinguished second place in size, trailing only to the enormous Sahara. A tunnel into the desert. Could this be some kind of joke? China decided to channel millions of tons of life-giving water into this seemingly impregnable fortress of endless dunes, hoping to foster new life there. To accomplish that goal, the resourceful Chinese population came up with the idea of constructing a huge tunnel system, drawing on their knack for creativity. But the pressing question is, where in the world could they possibly source all that water? After all, there is a solid reason people say that once you enter the Taklamakan Desert, you may never come out again. The few rivers that do exist never travel more than about 62 miles into the desert before disappearing into the shifting sands without a trace. Yet, all around the Taklamakan stands the mighty Himalayas, a region dominated by massive glaciers that are like a frozen kingdom. These expansive glaciers serve as the water source for the Yarlung Sangpo River, which flows through South Tibet at altitudes beyond 11,480 feet. Some people might note that the stretch between the Yarlung Sangpo and the Taklamakan's dunes measures over 620 miles, which is no small distance. The Chinese response to that observation is swift and straightforward. So what if it's that far? We can just build the longest tunnel on Earth, that's all there is to it. Our ancestors built the Great Wall, which runs about 13,170 miles without a single drilling machine or crane in sight. And we'll use every modern piece of equipment and cutting-edge technology at our disposal to construct this tunnel in our own era. According to the project that has been thoroughly developed, this tunnel will start at the lofty Tibetan Plateau and extend all the way to the desert in Xinjiang, split into several segments linked by waterfalls, creating a cascading system. As of now, the Jiaofang Tunnel in Liaoning Province is considered China's lengthiest water transport route, stretching about 53 miles in total. At present, the world's top record holder for water transport tunnels is a pipeline under New York City, spanning around 85 miles. In order to test the feasibility of carving out a tunnel stretching about 620 miles, China initially chose to construct a trial railway tunnel spanning nearly 373 miles. Right now, in Yunnan province, the drilling for this enormous long-distance tunnel is already in full swing. News sources indicate that this undertaking has an $8 billion budget and is expected to wrap up in eight years. The tunnel will be excavated using a specialized technique called HDD, or Horizontal Directional Drilling, which was successfully proven during the creation of the Palm Jumeirah in the United Arab Emirates. On top of that, they plan to utilize a cutting-edge tunnel boring machine referred to as the Bella type. 
this enormous machine can advance nearly 30 feet in a single day and can keep running around the clock every day of the week. Yet, one major puzzle is how they will transport this 4,400-ton colossus to elevations over 1.9 miles while tackling the Xinjiang Tunnel Project. Even so, that doesn't rank as the hardest challenge in the entire undertaking. That's because, during preparations for a 620-mile waterway, China's engineers have to tackle a range of complications linked to the sheer size of this never-before-attempted Xinjiang Tunnel. One of the toughest obstacles is determining how to deal with potential tunnel deformation or fracturing in the quake-prone Himalayan zone. Right now, the design team suggests linking the concrete segments in seismic fault areas with a material that has both flexibility and high strength. In simpler words, it's almost like hooking up subway cars, but in the context of massive underground pipes. Still, even if huge quantities of water are successfully delivered into the desert, the question arises, how will they exactly utilize it once it's there? It appears that the people behind this plan in China already know precisely how to address that issue. Ocean Fish in the Desert Have you ever thought about the idea of raising ocean fish in waters that lie thousands of miles from the nearest sea? This is the very challenge that Chinese researchers took on, as they explored whether marine fish could be raised in interior bodies of water throughout the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, widely recognized as among the most landlocked places on the planet. They came up with a remarkably inventive strategy to address this puzzle. The core idea was to introduce specialized trace elements and probiotics into nearby lakes and rivers. As a result, for well over a decade, 13 years in fact, fish like perch, shrimp and rainbow trout have thrived in rivers and lakes located around 9,850 feet above sea level in China's eastern Himalayan region. It turned out that treating glacier water with these special additives provided a near-perfect environment for these sea creatures to flourish. Even more amazing is that salmon, a fish often seen as quite high-end, is being cultivated deep in the Taklamakan's outskirts, under conditions tailored to meet all of its delicate needs. Thanks to the pure glacier water that pours in, the temperature stays near 54 degrees Fahrenheit all year long, and the fish are safeguarded by a dedicated enclosure that blocks any form of predator. As of 2024, due to well-structured salmon farming and processing methods, the annual salmon output has soared to about 7,700 U.S. short tons. Crab farming is also on the rise and is staying right in step with salmon production, without showing any sign of lagging behind. The area where crabs are being raised is Hoten County in the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, far inland from any coast. After conducting thorough studies, experts discovered that mixing salt intake with advanced aquaculture techniques leads to a noticeable surge in crab growth. A representative from a certain company noted that 33,000 U.S. short tons of young crabs were transported from Jiangsu province to Hotan, and within only four months, they turned into a mainstay of the aquatic market, bringing in tangible profits. Meanwhile, a trailblazing entrepreneur in China, who has a taste for experimentation, went a step beyond that. In an astonishing move, he established a fish farm smack in the middle of the Taklamakan Desert in Quimo County of Xinjiang. Battered by scorching heat in a place where virtually nothing grows, the Zaizai Zhang fish farm came into being. This bold entrepreneur started by introducing 100,000 juvenile fish of prized marine varieties, including mullet, silver palm fret, and grouper. Later on, marketing studies confirmed a growing appetite for first-rate seafood, indicating a promising future. But the biggest factor is that this desert location has certain unique conditions that are surprisingly ideal for these ocean creatures. The primary conditions are the plentiful sunshine and the sharp fluctuation in temperatures, from daytime to nighttime. This endeavor became a success because savvy leadership, the regional climate, the water's particular characteristics, and modern technology all lined up perfectly. Today, this fish farm has already added three aquaculture ponds and an off-site facility for seafood processing. The firm's representative says they also aim to cultivate pearl oysters, and they have already placed 2 million of them into the ponds. Rice in the Desert Rice has been grown across China for nearly 10,000 years, and it remains the number one staple for around 65% of its people. Around 30% of all rice worldwide is both grown and eaten within China. 
As most folks are aware, cultivating rice demands a large volume of water, and it's typical to keep paddy fields under roughly 6 inches of standing water. That sheds light on why, throughout 10,000 years of history, nobody in China truly believed rice could be grown in arid deserts. But as the old saying goes, timing is everything, and necessity has a way of driving invention forward. Almost all rice strains suffer in salt-alkali soil, yet between 1986 and 1991, a Chinese researcher developed a variety capable of handling those harsh conditions. Put another way, this scientist trained rice sprouts to survive inside sea-salted water environments. He named this remarkable strain Sea Rice 86. Compared to common rice, this new strain endures up to three times the usual salt concentration. Sea Rice 86 thrives even in the high salt and alkaline soils typical of very dry areas. Beyond mere survival, this rice actually aids in enhancing the overall condition of the soil. This variety is tough, stands up to floods, resists numerous plant illnesses, and carries more nutrients than typical rice varieties. Because of that scientist, in 2021, rice was harvested for the very first time on about 0.39 square miles of land in the desert area of Xinjiang, which had previously been deemed unfit for growing rice. Things continued so well that the area planted with sea rice 86 is set to reach about 25,900 square miles by 2031. In this way, the project to develop the waterless, lifeless deserts in China's northwest might look unrealistic at first glance. But nobody questions its eventual realization, and the segments of this grand plan have already begun, with progress speeding up. The pressing question is whether China can truly reach full self-sufficiency in food production. We'll save the details of that topic for another occasion. If you found today's video engaging, feel free to hit the like button and spread it around on your social platforms. Thank you so much for tuning in and spending your time with us. That's all for now. See you again soon. Goodbye.